Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever and whenever you may be listening to this broadcast. I'm Mark Holliday. Welcome to your encouraging word for today. You know what I want you to do. I want you to like, I want you to subscribe. I want you to share. I want you to contemplate what I'm getting ready to share with you today. You know, I just came from a uh, conference and uh, a cousin of ours was presenting a product she had did a wonderful job and you know we're happy for praying her prosperity and all of her endeavors but you know as leaving there i couldn't help but notice a concept that was in place in the entire uh, uh conference that was going on i love thinking about the power of unity and that's what we're going to talk about today the power of agreement and in essence how fast it causes one to prosper and I realized this in order for us to get somewhere in this day and time, we can no be, we can no longer be a long wolf. We cannot be a one man team. We have to be together in agreement on things, not just in talking, but also in our endeavors. And in doing so, I want to show you a few passages in scripture to show you and encourage you the power of agreement. Many times we're trying to get ahead uh, more than likely is financially a lot of times. And the reason why we don't move as fast as we should, there is no agreement or partnership. What about a business? Well, let's talk about marriage. Let's talk about ministry. Let's talk about community. If you really look at all of these areas, you will see the areas that do uh, come to an agreement on working with one another. Notice how they prosper. I couldn't help but notice when I was working on a certain side of the city in which I live, I was in the Jewish community. And I couldn't help but notice the camaraderie, the agreement, the unity that was in that community. One Jewish person told me, or I heard him say rather, that when one Jew make money, six others make money. They do business with one another. They they uh, they contract with one another. They they go to the synagogue among themselves. In other words, there is community, and where there is community, there is agreement. Let me show you quickly in Scripture about four places where God. God admonishes us to be in agreement. I want to start with Jesus because Jesus has the most wisdom among any about when it comes to this subject here. The Bible says uh, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus is the word. And when I say that his wisdom comes from God because he was God manifested in the flesh. So if anyone knows about the power of agreement and what it really is, it's going to be Jesus. In Matthew the 18th chapter verses 19 to 20, Jesus said again, truly I say to you that any of you you on earth agree on anything that you ask for, it will be done of them of my father, which is in heaven. He said, where two or three gather together in my name, he said, there will I be in the midst of them. But notice what he said. If any of two of you touch and agree, in other words, you come together, you're speaking the same thing. You're thinking the same thing. You're, you're, you're confessing the same thing. Your mindset is the same thing. This goes for communities, goes for marriage. It goes for church. It goes for friends. Do you know reason why many fathers many years ago will put their boys and girls on teams? It showed them how to work together with one another. It showed teamwork. It showed you how to yield yourself to leadership. It showed you how to work with one another. And I think that's what we're missing today, expressly, especially in the African-American community. It's that sense of community. It's that sense of togetherness. Everyone wants to launch out and say, hey, look at me, beat your, beat your own chest and say, look at me, look what I've done. But Jesus said, if two of you on earth can agree on anything they ask, it will be done of you and my father if you ask in my name. So Jesus is advocating agreement. He's advocating togetherness. He's advocating speaking the same thing, thinking the same thing. This is what he did. <clears throat> Among his disciples, he caused them to work together. And in doing so, they was able to succeed in all their endeavors. I want you to turn to Genesis, the 11th chapter. Now, you know, this concept work, whether you're doing something for the good or you're doing something for the bad. Jesus said, if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. So even the enemy in an enemy's camp, the concept of agreement is advocated and is spoken of 
Because if you can agree on anything, there is power, there is strength. It's hard to break people up who's on agreement or something, whether it's a lie or whether it's the truth. That's how powerful agreement is. Look what it says in Genesis, the 11th chapter. This is the story when they begin to build a tower. They said, let's make a name for ourselves so we will not be a, uh, uh, just a vagabond people in the earth. So they decided to build a tower and they was in such an agreement, but they was in an agreement on a wrong thing that God himself said, I had to go down and see what they were doing. When you get to the sixth verse, this is what God said about the people that was building. He said the people, first of all, he said they are united. He said they're all speaking the same thing. They have the same language and nothing they set their mind to do. He said nothing will be impossible to them. Now notice what happened. He said they are united. They're speaking the same thing. That means they had the same mind. They was moving in harmony with one another. Watch this now. What happens if a marriage got together? If husband and wife stopped fighting over finances saying, that's your money, this is my money, that's your car, this is my car. And when the kids are good, th these are my kids. When they're bad, those are your kids. You know, uh, Everything is divided in this day and time. Now, I'm not going to get into I was divorced and they took my money later on and and, and I worked all my life in my, my latter stage and I got married and I'm not, not, not about to give him or her access to my account. Another message for another day. My point is this, when there is division in any relationship, you cannot expect yourself to prosper the way you intend to prosper because there is something about unification. So in this scripture here, the only way God was able to cause or bring a division about among this group because they was doing something wrong. So he had to break it up. He confused their uh, languages so they can no longer communicate with one another. Now that will lead into a whole nother uh, message about communication. But again, look what he says. He said, the people are united. They all speak in the same language. He said, they're moving in the same direction. And he said, whatever, whatever they set out to do, he said, nothing will be impossible to them. Meaning this, if finances are lacking because they're unified, they're going to find a way. If resources are not available, listen, they're going to find a way. If they say they don't like my skin color, they're going to find a way. You don't like my sex, they're going to find a way. When I say sex, I'm talking about gender. He said, if you don't like that, they're going to find another way. This building isn't big enough. You're going to find another way. Why? The people were unified in what they do. Now, if you jaywalk over to the book of Amos, the third chapter in the third verse, God asked the question, asked the prophet and the prophet was asking the people a question. He said, can two people walk together unless they are agreed? Now watch this. He said, first of all, you can't walk together. You can't be in a relationship with one another until you first come into an agreement with certain things. Sometimes you just got to agree. We can't agree on this matter. Let's come back. Now see, that's agreement. Let's not bring this up. Let's not talk about this right now. This is one of the key factors in when married couples are in a disagreement with one another. We're not seeing eye to eye on this matter. So let's halt this conversation conversation right now. Let's put an arrest on what we're saying. Let's write it down and let's come back to it later on because this eventually is going to tear up the little harmony that we do have. So do you see how agreement and, and harmony has to be there in order for something to prosper? Now the scripture says, can two walk together unless they be agreed? And what in, in essence is really saying is until we are in agreement, we can't walk together. Until we're in agreement about how this community should function, how it should operate, this community cannot come together until we come in an agreement where we're not going to have parties 11 and 12 and one o'clock in the morning. We're not going to have loud music. We're not going to have people hanging on the corner. We're going to, we're going to encourage this neighbor to cut their grass. We're going to encourage this neighbor to do a, B and C. You get what I'm saying. What about church? What about encouraging the church for three months? Listen, we're just going to speak positive. We're going to pray. We're going to go out and feed the hungry. We're going to clean up the neighborhood, whatever it is. My point is this. When you come together in an agreement, nothing will be impossible to you. God himself said this. I want to give you one more scripture. 
In 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, the 10th verse, this is what Paul said in the ESV version. He said, I appeal to you brothers by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree that there be no divisions among you, but that you be unified in the same mind and in the same judgment. Notice what he said. He said, I want you to agree. Don't let it be any divisions among you. He said, I want you to be unified with the same mind and the same judgment. When he talk about same judgment, we're going to come up with the same conclusion that whatever we're endeavoring to do, he said, we're going to be unified. There's going to be an agreement. When a married couple get together and say, listen, we're going to put aside five, 10% of our paycheck into an account. And we're going to sit on this for three to five years. And then we're going to buy ourselves a building and we're going to buy that building. We're going to take the equity out of that building, buy another building, another building, and another building. My point is this, and I'm throwing financial things out there because that's sometimes what causes relationships to break down. Also, we're going to come up to an agreement. We're not going to yell at one another. Uh, we're not going to demean one another. We're going to uplift one another. We're going to confess the same thing. My wife and I, when we were engaged, uh, she was living with her parents. I was still at home with my parents, but we came to the conclusion we're going to get a house and we're going to change our, our employment. And we got together for three months speaking the same thing. We talked about it. We studied scripture on it and we confessed it. And then next thing you know, in three months, we found our house. We found our new employment, what we wanted to do. Do you know why we happened? How it happened? Rather, it was because we was in an agreement. There was no division among us. We were united with the same mind. We came up with the same conclusion, judgment. And as we was walking together, we were in an agreement. Back to Genesis 11, the chapter in the sixth verse, nothing was impossible to us. We carry the same mindset 23 years later in our marriage and everything we put our hands to prosper. Did we have challenges? Yes. Well, we tried. Yes. Did we get into some arguments along the way? Yes. But we reconcile. See, anything that's good is going to be challenged. And this is my challenge to you. Get in agreement with a friend, a co-worker, a spouse, someone, a, a, a relative, and agree on something. Find the scripture, get it in your mind, confess it, get it in your spirit, and then let nothing stop you and watch everything you put your hands to shall begin to prosper. I'm going to stop right there. I'm Mark Holiday. That's your encouraging word for today.